ادع الى سبيل ربك بالحكمه والموعظه الحسنه وجادله بالتي هي احسن ان ربك هو اعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله the different categories of water. Water is a, one of the essentials of, of life and it is very important for the Muslim to know what different types of water can they use to make wudu, can they use to take ghusl for bathing, which type of uh, water can they consume and which type of waters can they not consume. So. Today, uh, we're going to explain a little bit about the different categories of water, okay? And there is some differences of opinion in regards to uh, the amount or the number of categories uh, of water, of aqsam uh, al Some scholars only divide the categories of water into two categories, but we are going to take the opinion of the scholars who say that water is divided into three categories. Okay, so the first category is tuhur. Okay, tuhurun. The second category is tahir. And the third category is najis. The first category, tuhurun, which means water which is pure, or water which remains in its natural state, the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it whether it's rainwater, whether it's water uh, such as sleet or hail or snow or water which is found in rivers or brooks or streams, water which is found in ponds. So it is water, okay, tuhur, is the water which remains in its natural state, in its natural state. And this is the only type of water that a Muslim can use for purification. When a Muslim makes wudu, or when a Muslim takes a ghusl, okay? The water must remain in its natural state. It must be clear. It must be free from any types of impurities, any type of discoloration, and it must be free from any type of smell, any type of smell, okay? And as I said, this is the category, this is the type of water which you can use for removing impurities okay if you have some type of najasa something impure some blood or some urine or defecation on your clothing or anything like that you can use this type of water to remove impurities and it is also used for ritual purification to get you prepared for wudu so that you can pray and that you can read the quran and then you can perform tawaf and you can do many other actions of worship Okay. And some of the scholars mention that there are some uh, types of water which are disliked to use when making wudu. Uh, and this is zamzam water. Zamzam water is a blessed water. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us about it. He said, Zamzam lima shuri balahu. He said, Zamzam is for uh, drinking and consuming. And whatever you make supplication for when you drink Zamzam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer that supplication. So Zamzam water, uh, which is tuhur, which remains in its natural state the way that Allah created it, should be used for consumption and drinking. And the scholars mentioned that it is not recommended or it is disliked to use it to make wudu because it is a blessed water, it is a noble water, and it is a water that the Prophet Muhammad used to drink. On occasion, he would uh, pour some on his head, pour some on his head when he was making uh, when he was finishing his tawaf in his hajj or his umrah. But we don't find the, any hadith about the Prophet Muhammad SAW making wudu with zamzam water. Even though it was abundant in Mecca during his time, he would make wudu with other types of water. But if it came down to it and you had no other water except zamzam water, it would be permissible to do so. So that is tuhur. The second type of water we have here is water which is called tahir. Water which is called tahir, which we can say uh, water that which has been changed 
by something pure. And what do we mean by something pure? Something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, such as leaves, such as mud, dirt, sand, uh, tree branches, stones, rocks, um, maybe uh, insects and things like this, right? Something which is pure, okay? Tea leaves, maybe you put lemon inside the water, you put oranges inside the water. So all of these things are normally uh, consumable by the Muslim, by the human being. But you find that one of the, the characteristics of the water has changed by this pure thing, whether it's tea, whether it's sugar, or Kool-Aid, or food coloring, or vinegar, or lemonade, okay? So, this type of water, when you add tea to the water, it changes its what? It changes its color, and it changes its taste. It turns red, if you have red tea, or green, if you have green tea. Uh, lemonade, right, it changes its taste when you add the lemons to the water, it becomes bitter, and it may also change its color, okay? So this type of water, it cannot be used for purification. You cannot make wudu with it, nor can you take a ghusl with it, okay? But it can be used for other things besides purification. Let's say you wanted to wash dishes with it, or you wanted to wash your car, or you wanted to wash clothes, you didn't have any other water, and this was the only water you had, it would be okay for you to clean your uh, eating utensils or things like this with this type of water. But it would not be permissible for you to actually make wudu with this water, okay? So this is water which is called tahir, which has been changed by something pure, okay? Changed by something pure. Now we have the third category, which is water which is impure. We call this in Arabic najis. Najisun, okay? Water that has been changed by something impure. Water that has been changed by something impure, whether it is blood, whether it is urine, whether it is defecation, anything impure that enters into the water and the water changes its state, whether it changes its smell, it changes its taste, or it changes its color, then it becomes completely impure and you cannot use that water. But the scholars, the scholars explain in detail. They say, well, if the water is a small amount, okay, aqal min qullatain, less than 200 liters, less, if the water is less than 200 liters, let's say you had, uh, you know, a mini pool filled with water, okay, and it was only about 150 liters, okay, and one of your children urinated in the water, okay, and, okay, and it changed, okay? So whether it changed or it didn't change, that type of water still remains impure and you cannot use the water, okay? But if the water is a large amount, let's say you have a big uh, khazan or you have a big uh, well or you have a big tank in your backyard or on your roof where you store the water, okay? And let's say there was some mice or some rats that went and they defecated or they urinated into the water. Or there was an impure animal that came and urinated into the water. Okay? So the scholars, they say, if it is changed, okay, if it changes its color, its smell or its taste, and it's above 220 liters, okay, which is about a qullatain, two qullas, then you can use it. And it still remains pure. It still remains pure. But if it is less, Okay, if it is, uh, excuse me, if it doesn't change, okay, if it doesn't change, then it's not impure. So if it changes, okay, if that water, which is above 220 liters, if it changes one of its characteristics, the smell, the taste, or the color, then it is impure. But if it doesn't change, then it is what? Then it is impure. So one of you have asked about uh, previously about the water of the ocean, the ocean water, okay? Can you use ocean water to make wudu? We have a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions, they said, they said we always travel on the boats or we go fishing on the boats or we go to journeys uh, on the ships and we bring some water with us but we're worried that if we drink the water or if we use the water to make wudu, 
we are going to be thirsty and we won't have any water to drink. So what should we do, O Messenger of Allah? What should we do in regards to wudu? Should we use the water that we have for drinking for wudu and then be thirsty? Or what should we do? So the Messenger وسلم, he says, he says that the water of the ocean is pure. Okay, tuhur. Okay, ma'uhu tuhur wa ahillu maytatuhu. Okay, he said, okay, Maqal and Nabi Sallallahu he said that the water of the ocean is pure, the sea water is pure, and also it is permissible for you to consume anything which is in the ocean, whether it's dead or whether it is alive from amongst the sea creatures, whether it's whales, sharks, eels, sea snakes, turtles, um, dolphins, any animal which is in the water, whether it's dead or alive, you can consume it, okay, based on the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these are the three categories of water, tuhur, tahr, and najis. And we talked about the definition of each one. And in our next lecture, we're going to talk about the manners of how to answer the call of nature and the manners and etiquettes of how to use the bathroom. So thank you all for joining us this evening. May Allah bless all of you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts and purify our souls and purify our bodies with pure water and pure teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam jazakallahu khairan wa barakatuh assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh